Magic. It lets you shoot fire out your hands. I'm a fire! Turn enemies into frenemies. Someone there? I love you. And conjure up. Magic is pretty neat, and most of you have probably spent a decent amount of time playing as a spell sword or mage. However, after a while, things understandably get a little stale. But fret not. Today, I'll be sharing a magical mod list that will get you excited to delve into magic again. Let's first start off with large foundational mods. A lot of you probably know what Ordinator is, but if you've been living under a rock and don't, well, it's a perk overhaul that adds hundreds of new perks, allowing for more builds. Long gone are the days of secretly getting the same perk over and over again. Boring vanilla perks have been reworked, and even new mechanics have been implemented. But alright, what does this mean if you're playing a mage? Well, you could go down the route of Vancian magic. You essentially become a super mage, suffering from Alzheimer's disease. Instead of using magicka to cast spells, you instead memorize them. Your spells will be twice as effective, but be careful, because you can only cast around 20 times, after which you'll need to rest at an inn or at home to re-memorize your spells. Huh, how do I cast that firebolt spell again? And where am I? Also, why am I naked? Or how about becoming a powerful staff channeler? You'll be able to use your staff as an energy source to make your weapon enchantments more effective. You can even suck, uh, I mean drain the energy out your own staff to restore health, magicka, and stamina. Other schools of magic like Illusion, which let's be honest, really sucked in vanilla, will have new interesting abilities. You can steal dreams to empower your Illusion spells, or summon copies of your enemies to fight for you. So if you're playing a mage, Ordinator gives you the freedom to put together some really interesting playstyles that simply weren't possible in vanilla. But you know what else gives you freedom and allows you to put together interesting playstyles? <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends. It's a free to download RPG available on iOS, Android, and PC with over 600 champions and insane boss variety. Fight bosses like Astronix the Dark Fae, She's an elf who studied the stars, but studied a little too hard and kind of went cuckoo. During fights, she'll summon doppelgangers of your champions, so bring someone to buff your team speed or else you'll succumb to her balls. A lot is happening this month. Raid's running a series of summer splash events, and you can get amazing skins for everyone's favorite dwarf, Trinda. Oh, and one more thing. You got it. Ultimate Death Knight, coming August 2022. So make sure you get in now if you want to be a part of it. Use the link in the description or scan my QR code and get $30 worth of rewards. You'll get a free epic champion, Verges, 200k silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. Be sure to grab these rewards here, and just know that these rewards are only available for the next 30 days and for new players. Add over. For our main magic overhaul, we'll be using Odin. Odin improves vanilla spells, fixes bugs, and rebalances magic. Staves and scrolls have also been modified to be as strong as their equivalent spells. Every school of magic will have new spells added to them that are lore friendly and stay in line with Skyrim's design. Are you tired of spending hours looking for certain crafting stations? Well, you can now temporarily fabricate them using alteration. Want to give your weapons some extra bite? Then imbue your weapons with elemental damage using destruction. Sick and tired of enemy mages buffing themselves? Well, you can now dispel their spells and wards using illusion. A wise woman once told me that restoration is a perfectly valid school of magic. Now I will admit I didn't see this in the past, but I do now. After exploding corpses to deal mass poison damage to all my enemies, and those looking to get into conjuration will be pleased to learn that you can summon a whole range of minions to counter certain enemies like the Sanctified Wraith, who will drain magicka and dispel spells, making it a great counter to enemy mages. I also recommend getting Odin summons redone if you want to give your summons a visual overhaul. For shock enthusiasts, you may want to grab Storm Calling Magic. It adds three lightning abilities inspired from the Sorcerer class in ESO. You can deal continuous area of effect damage, call lightning to strike enemies, or quickly dash dealing damage to enemies around you. But for those looking to get up close and personal, 
you'll want Kingsglaive. Kingsglaive is technically speaking a melee weapon. However, it's one of the most unique weapons out there and will constantly reshape itself when you attack with it. Even though it is a melee weapon, it actually doesn't benefit from melee perks or buffs, and instead it's affected by your conjuration perks and skill level, making it a perfect weapon for those putting together a spell sword build. True Directional Movement It adds 360 attacking, sprinting, and a bunch of other features to bring Skyrim closer to contemporary RPGs. Most of you have probably heard of it by now. However, I want to highlight its target lock feature. There's an option in its configuration menu to enable homing magic projectiles for the player. Now, some of you may not want this feature, but I personally really enjoy playing with it. It modernizes magic gameplay, so you won't have to worry about aiming all the time. And you can pull off some really neat tricks with it too. I hate projectiles in vanilla Skyrim. They're simply too damn fast. And in some cases, well, they're instant. To fix this issue, we'll need projectiles ADXP. This mod reduces projectiles so you can actually avoid them. But it also introduces some other changes that I enjoy. Concentration spells for fire, shock, and frost have been altered. Frost will now cast many more projectiles, but they will move slowly, making it suited for close range, because these projectiles can set up a defensive wall to deter enemies. While Shock, on the other hand, casts fewer projectiles, so you can't really set up walls, but it's perfect for countering other mages because of its faster projectile speed. Though this mod does take some time to get used to, I feel that it adds some much needed balance to projectiles. Resistances and weaknesses make certain enemies resistant and weaker to damage types. So for example, skeletons will be resistant to Shock and Fire, but will be weaker to Frost. This helps to make the various elements more special and situational, making you think twice which ones you want to specialize in. I like the idea of having the player to put in the work before they can call themselves Master of the Arcane. So let's use TDF Equipment Restriction to add skill requirements to weapons, spells, and armor. You can toggle these options in its MCM, but I enjoy having these restrictions in place. If you're a novice, you'll have a much harder time being able to cast advanced spells, and you'll have to improve your skills in order to effectively cast them. This simple change gives you much more incentive to delve into magic, and it's very rewarding when you manage to break through the various skill increments. Ever wanted to roleplay as a sneaky mage? Well, for whatever reason, you can't sneak attack with magic in vanilla Skyrim. But thankfully, magic sneak attacks lets you do this, so you'll now be able to catch enemies off guard with magic, making sneaky mage builds more viable, especially if you grab the Silent Storm perk in the Illusion Tree. Sound. It's pretty important. So to make magic feel more mystical, we'll need Argidlim. Argidlim adds over 100 sound effects to make all schools of magic sound unique and visceral. Skyrim without animation mods is like that strange sock you find underneath your dad's bed. They're both stiff and horrible to look at, but thankfully we can fix this by grabbing finally first person magic animations and Goetia animations. This combination overhauls almost all spellcasting animations in the game and even adds new ones for staves. These animations are a joy to play with and will help to make playing with magic feel fresh again. Graphical mods. We need them to make magic, well, more magical. Those using ENB should definitely try ENB Light. It'll make spells, as well as magical projectiles, emit light, and will look especially impressive in the dark. Visual animated enchants will help make enchantments look unique and powerful. It'll also overhaul artifacts like the Ebony Blade to have their own unique visuals. Deadly spell impacts will add high quality impact textures that vary in size. Ultimate HD fire effects and arctic frost effects redux will overhaul fire and frost to have better visual fidelity and even add 3D meshes. As for shock, well I actually prefer the color and texture from vanilla Skyrim, but if you wanted to, you could opt in for a more bluish hue by grabbing voltage. Spell rune retexture will give us higher quality rune textures. 
And last but not least, frozen electrocuted combustion will add visual effects to actors that die from magic. Here are some quick examples. Draining spells and enchantments will cause victims to turn into shriveled up grapes. Frost will freeze corpses, making them shatterable. And those who succumb to shock will spasm and have their skeletons light up. Alright, so we've got the mods to make you play like a mage. But what about the mods to make you look like a mage? I am Professor Moek Eves, and welcome to Dank Dudes, the best show in all of Skyrim for keeping up to date with uh, the. the. Uh... Stacy, what does it say on the teleprompter? On the teleprompter, yes, Stacy. For keeping up to date with the best drip pattern. Right, let's drip you out, shall we? First up, we have equipable tones. You can craft these bad boys at the new sage crafting table in Dragon's Reach, or find them out in the world. But these tomes and books aren't just cosmetic. They can be enchanted to help you cast magic more effectively from the different schools. But for those looking to roleplay as a traveling mage, the HDT SM P Traveler's Backpack is just for you. This rustic looking backpack includes physics and will provide you with the extra carrying capacity for you to haul around your gear. It can get pretty dark within the dark recesses of Skyrim when adventuring. So, go get yourself a magic lantern from Simple Wearable Lanterns. Ever wanted to look like a proper wizard? Well, now you can with wizard hats. Just peep this drip, fam. See If ever you have wished to pull the witches, you've got to show off your riches. So, go grab yourself Prady's staves. Witches love a good long staff. As for outfits, well, there are a fantastic number of options out there just waiting for you. However, it's almost 4 p.m. and I must go have my dinner. So, I will be providing links down below in the description so that you can browse through at your leisure. All right, I have been Professor Moek Eads, and thank you for watching Dank Dudes. I'll see you next time. I hope this list gets you excited enough to play as a mage or spell sword. Now, I will be working on a whole other video showing how to overhaul the College of Winterhold in the future, so if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss it. Leave a like if you enjoyed the content, and consider supporting the channel on Patreon. My amazing patrons help make it possible for me to create the content you're watching, while I also study at uni. Take care, lads and lasses, and see you next time. Just peep this drip, fam. See?